Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. Ich war seit Wochen auf diesen Tag und tanz vor Freude über den Asphalt. Als wär's sein Rhythmus, als gäbe sein Lied. Hallo und welcome to Gegenpressing, the Bundesliga podcast. I'm your host Manuel Fied and um, he is Stefan Bienkowski. Stefan Bienkowski, how's it going? Yeah, very, very well. Uh, I am delighted to be on this show with a fiery passion to finally overtake you in this predictions race. Mm. Of course, we didn't really know, get German football news, who are very kind to always retweet and sh uh, share our predictions on their homepage. We're keeping, keeping score. <laughs> yeah, they, are, they are driving a wedge between us. They are. Um, a wolf in sheepskin is Daniel yeah. Pinder. This Daniel Pinder fella, yes. <laughs> um, no, it's all very nice. Um, nice little cooperation that we have with them here. They, they publish our predictions on their homepage and we, we provide them with a little blurb for our game of the week and apparently we we found out in horror last week that they were keeping score um and currently i am up 15 to 14 according to our calculations right mm, it looks like it yeah it's close it doesn't help that last week we basically picked the exact same predictions for every game yes and it also doesn't help that you know we get a lot of our predictions wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, I guess we'll see how it goes this match day. And uh, who's going to, to go have the, the winning score after this? Of course, it doesn't help that, um, as I said, we get a lot of our scores right wrong. So don't necessarily <laughs> bet on them. Um, but, yeah, let's, let's jump into our this week's predictions after this break. This episode of the Game Pressing Podcast is brought to you at Bet Online. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wage on all your favorite sports, contests, and events, the first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information, from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet online today or use your mobile device to join today. And make your first spots bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50. That is B L E A V 50. BELIEVE50 to receive your 50% welcome bonus on our first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. So, Stefan, um, as I said, no pressure, apparently. Um, first game is the Friday game, Freiburg against Bochum. Um, I went here for a 2-0 Freiburg win. How about you? I have also gone for a 2-0 win for Freiburg. Um, <laughs> yeah. To get nowhere with this. <laughs> yeah. I think your plan for the rest of the season is just to copy my results so I can never actually overtake you. Uh, but <laughs> it doesn't help that you, which is obviously impossible because you went first. But um, yeah, you know, Freiburg... Kind of hot and cold a wee bit this season. I was a wee bit disappointed in them against Dortmund, but they bounced back against Stuttgart. They obviously picked up that good result against Augsburg uh, in the first match day. And as we've kind of spoke about recently, Bochum just look like a lead balloon at this moment in time. Um, mm -hmm. They're nowhere near the team they were last season. And to go to Freiburg and get a result, I think, is far too, um, far too much to ask of them right now. Yeah, uh, we also should probably uh, point out here that we actually don't know each other's results. No, of course not, no. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we usually scribble them down before the show and then we just jump on and we don't actually say anything about uh, how we get there and why what our thinking is. Um, yeah, so there's that. But So even if I wanted to, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, if I think if we had checked each other's results before we record and they were all the same, we would probably say, "Right, we need to change these." So it just yeah. goes to show how much we don't prep before the show. <laughs> well, we we just 
don't say that. We do prep something. But um, I think <laughs> the next one is your match of the week, Leipzig against Wolfsburg, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, these two historic traditional clubs with two of the most passionate supports in the league just thrown together and uh, will undoubtedly put forth uh, a sensory overload for you know our TV view. No, of course not. Um, it's not really one on the calendar for the purists, shall I say. But I do think, at least on the pitch, this should be a really interesting game. Um, Wolfsburg have, you know, they've kind of had a stumbling start to the season. Um, I thought they actually, weirdly enough, the only game they've lost so far is that Bayern game. I actually didn't think they were that bad in it. Um, so I was quite surprised to see them, you know, get held to a nil-nil draw against Schalke. Um, but I still think there's quite a lot in this team um, to kind of really push on. I think they're just kind of we're just kind of waiting for something to click into gear. And of course, Leipzig are just an absolute basket case right now. They seem capable of scoring goals, but they also seem just as capable of shooting themselves in the foot at the moment. But having said that, Timo Werner still looks really, really impressive. Um, and you know, I still think there'll be goals in this game. So I've actually gone for a two-two draw between these two teams. All right, so here we differ. I went for Leipzig winning this game 2-1. Mm. Um, so we'll see, I guess, was right. But I, I think Leipzig, this is a must win for Leipzig. Mm. Um, obviously, there has been a lot of noise around this club with um, Minzlaff apparently heading to the dressing room uh, and speaking to the players without Dominic Tedesco being present. Um, I think there is... There, there is a lot of noise regarding the, the sporting director position, but I also think there's going to be noise on, on deadline day in terms of transfers, uh, which is going mm. to be which is going to be hugely interesting because um, I don't think anyone is enjoying the start that they had. And um, so I think this is, or maybe you're right, maybe this is the sort of environment that provides, provides a team with too much pressure and um, leads to them actually dropping points here again, right? But imagine mm. that happens, Stefan. I mean, that that would be a, a huge story at this stage. Yeah. I mean, I probably wouldn't quite put Tedesco top of the next manager to be sack list just yet. I think probably Bochum have bigger concerns and maybe Hertha. Mm. But we're not far off it. And we know that Leipzig are a club who don't mess around when things aren't working well. We saw that with Jesse Marsh yeah. uh, last season, who has gone from strength to strength since leaving Leipzig. <laughs> so, you know, that doesn't really reflect well on Leipzig right now. Um, it doesn't help their fans to think that the previous manager is now going, doing really well in the Premier League. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I'm still not sure we're quite there just yet, just because there's still so many moving parts in the transfer window, as you said. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I still think they're maybe a bit off winning yet. So... But then again, if it's a draw, then it will keep even more pressure on Tedesco. So we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm another team hugely under pressure. Uh, this is the next game. Mainz against Leverkusen. We do know Sione isn't going anywhere, right? Hmm. Uh, Gerardo Sione, the head coach of Leverkusen, is not is not on the hot seat as of now. Uh, but we, we we should say that's that's literally our information. Not yes. it, it's not it's not official. It's not a press conference or anything that's came out this week. Um, we have been told specifically that they're not looking to replace him. We also have been told specifically that Callum Hudson Odoi is going to finally be in the Bundesliga. Hmm. So very interesting, and I think that kind of illustrates probably where Leipzig's not Leipzig sorry Leverkusen's, Leverkusen, yeah. um, where their kind of mind is right now. I think they appreciate the squad isn't quite up to scratch. Um, they're still wheeling and dealing to kind of fill holes in the team. So, uh, you know, they're still a work in progress. I don't think they're placing the blame on the head coach just yet. Mm. Uh, I think Ziona's still got plenty of, not plenty of time, he still has some time. Having said that, uh, I actually think Mainz will win this game. I think they'll probably win mm. it narrowly 1-0, which will not go down well at the Bay Arena. But just looking at both these teams right now, I think it's going to be a a one it's going to be a home win okay so yeah i i went the opposite direction i said a 3-0 leverkusen win oh mm -hmm. what makes you think that i think they have to <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, when I Leeds must. Those things, yeah, it's a must win for them at this stage. If you lose the first five of the season, that's when you really go down a dark path. And I, I kind of put that in a newsletter around this whole Callum Hudson Adoy story, right? Hmm. Um, which I find hugely fascinating because it was such a Bayern Munich for I think two season, two years, not even two transfer windows, two years. So four full four transfer windows tried to get this guy. Mm-hmm. And then of course he had this Achilles injury and um he signed a new contract and even then it kind of fell apart in one of the transfer windows because Chelsea wanted this like huge um obligation to buy option. Mm-hmm. And then Dortmund were sniffing about, Leipzig were sniffing about, and then finally Finally, it seems to be happening, but it's almost like this rescue anchor for Leverkusen as, in terms of we need to provide a positive story. And the guy that they originally wanted for this position was uh, Michael Mutrik, and that's not happening for various reasons, right? Hmm. So I just find this really fascinating. And it kind of shows you too that it feels a little bit plants are being thrown overboard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a large part of it as well is just look at the performances of Hlozik in the first couple of games. He's been thrown in as a starter, which, you know, a large part is obviously down to Bellarabi's injuries, but we're talking about a player in Bellarabi who's consistently injured. Uh, unfortunately, um, he's just one of those players, but hlozik has been thrown in a few times. He hasn't quite kind of hit the ground running. So mm-hmm. I think this is probably Leverkusen going back to the drawing board and saying, right, we, we need even more cover for those wide positions. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if this, I mean, this is obviously once the CHO deal happens, um, which I think is probably going to be as soon as this weekend. Uh, this is something that we're going to cover in more in depth, but I think it's also something that is not the final piece for Leverkusen. But this is a huge match day for them, and um, I, it's going to make it a very interesting game um, to keep an eye on. Um, Stefan, the next game, Hoffenheim against Augsburg. And I have a narrow Hoffenheim win here, 2-1. How about you? <laughs> yeah, I've got the exact same result. Um, yeah, do you know, Hoffenheim have probably been one of the surprise results for me, um, or surprise teams for me this season. I really thought they were going to struggle uh, after losing David Raum. But of course, they then brought in Angelino, who's more or less just as good a player, maybe not quite as good, and maybe not as high a ceiling as Raum. But day-to-day, in terms for, for Hoffenheim, a very good replacement um and yeah they've been absolutely fine for the most part obviously they lost their first game to um gladback but they looked absolutely fantastic against uh, leverkusen and mm. particularly Ruter, i thought looked like an outstanding player cranberch doing what he does Baumgartner scores an outrageous back heel um you know all of a sudden this team who really dropped off in the second half of the season last year then sacked their head coach then lost this fullback, wing back, who was basically their playmaker, mm-hmm. and you really feared the worst. And now they're basically playing like the Harlem Globetrotters. So, I think I think they're probably going to pick up a pretty decent win against Augsburg here. I've gone for two one as well because mm-hmm. um, I don't think Augsburg are really. I don't think they're huge pushovers, but still think all three points for Hoffenheim. Right. Uh, so the next one, and I really struggled here. Hertha against Dortmund. So I'm going to let you do your prediction first, and then I'm going to shock you with mine. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, do you know what? I actually, um, I think this is going to be a pretty straightforward 2-0 win for Dortmund, to be honest with Mm. you. Um, I watched Hertha against Gladbach last week. They they were quite good in being direct. Uh, You know, they've obviously got Kanga up front, they've obviously got Ejuke, they got Luca Bacchio they've got these guys with plenty of pace so they can kind of hoof it and they did get in behind the Gladbach defence quite a lot. Having said that, I thought Ika, Ika, Itakura, uh, the centre-back at Gladbach, I thought he looked really good alongside mm-hmm. Elvedi, but um, so that could cause Dortmund problems just because that back line seems to be a nightmare at the best of times, but I think we should probably I think we're expecting a few players to come back for Dortmund this weekend Um and I think they probably, they really should be bouncing back after what happened last week. I just feel like complacency just cannot be an option for them. And I think if they were to lose this game, there'd be some serious question marks because Hertha are probably the second worst team in the division this year, in my opinion, uh, behind mm-hmm. maybe Bochum. So and it's a, maybe not, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's a must win for Eden Terzic, but 
I think there'll be some notable boos if they don't win this game. Yeah, see, I don't think it's going to be quite that straightforward. I've actually gone for a 1-1 draw here. Um, I just don't... I just don't know... I mean, a lot of it hinges on Gio Reyna could be back in the starting 11, right? Mm. Um, Karim Adeyemi could be back um, in the starting 11. I think if those things happen, then they have probably a good shout of winning this game. Um, but I just have no trust in this team at the moment <laughs> and, and in the leadership. And um, until I'm being proven otherwise, I'm going to go with a prediction that will not favor Dortmund fans. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, means now that they're going to probably stomp them 2-0 or 3-0 or 4 now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I could I could very easily see Dortmund being held to Hertha here, but I think if they do, it would be a serious problem. And Tedesco might not be the only guy looking over his shoulder. Mm. Yeah. All right. So the next game is Schalke against Union Berlin. Um, I've gone for a narrow two-one Union Berlin win here. <laughs> You too, right? <laughs> yeah, I've got two one. I think, yeah, look, Union Berlin, I think they've had a great start to the season. Uh, Jordan Payfolk, who, did you see his tweet earlier on? Yes, he's finally, just, he finally explained to us what he wants to be called. Yeah, but he didn't. This is the most infuriating thing. He said, Sibachu, Payfolk, my name is Theosin Jordan Sibachu. My friends call me Jordy. And my best friend is my mum. That's why I play with Peafolk or Jordan because she gave me this name and I couldn't put Peafolk. It's easier to say Peafolk than Sabatu, so now it's up to you. Yeah, so we can do whatever we want. Yeah, so he hasn't clarified <laughs> anything. He didn't clarify at all. He's, but then I did realise that his Twitter account is literally call me Peafolk. That's like... <laughs> it's, what he's, it's literally what his Twitter handle is, call me Peafolk. So I think we should maybe call him Peafolk. Yeah, let's call him Peafolk. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I, I responded to that tweet saying if he keeps doing what he's doing, they'll be calling him the goat. So he won't need a name at this route in Berlin. Um, yeah, I think I think Union Berlin look pretty outstanding so far. They've picked up two good results against Hertha, Leipzig, decent draw against Mainz. Um, and, you know, much like, um, much like Augsburg, maybe, I, I feel like Schalke are certainly no pushovers. They've done well to kind of grind out two draws in the last two games against Wolfsburg and a very decent Gladbach team, I think. So, you know, I don't think it's going to be an easy game, but on the balance of things, I think Union Berlin have a better team. they got that striker up front doing his thing. So I've gone for 2-1 for Union. Mm. Speaking of a very decent Gladbach side, um, there is a lot of history here between Bayern Munich and Gladbach. Gladbach tend to win this game quite often, including a 5-0 smashing of Bayern Munich in the second round of the DFB-Pokal. And we're talking about both teams fielding their first 11. Hmm. Um, they also won their last game um, in the Bundesliga, match day, 18, uh, match day 18th um, in Munich, I have to add, which is... Of course, back then it was without attendance, but still. So my heart is saying Gladbach could be the first stumbling block here. But my mind is saying Bayern Munich are too strong for anyone and Bayern Munich are going to win this game 3-0. And this is my match of the week just because there's so much history here. This is the original Klassiker, right? Mm. These are two teams that in the 70s and in the early 80s dominated German football. Um, both have huge fan bases, but I just don't, you know, my mind is just saying to me, this Bayern team is just way too strong at the moment and who's going to stop them. And I don't know if Gladbach is going to be that first team that's actually going to put up, put up a decent test. Having said that, they have done it in the past, so I wouldn't be surprised if I was wrong. Yeah, you know, this is such an interesting game for me. It's actually first versus second, which just kind of goes to show how much Gladbach have kind of flew under the radar so far. Um, you know, even though they picked up a very narrow 1-0 win over Hertha, I actually thought they looked really good. Um, and they've kind of picked up... I mean, I, I know this isn't really kind of anything new because 
these players have been at the club for some time now, but they've got this front four, obviously, of Plea, Turam, Neuhaus and Hoffman. And the four of them were just outstanding in the way that they kind of counterattacked and played off one another. They got in behind Hertha's defence, you know, a number of times. Um, I think they had like six shots on target. Um, they should have probably scored a couple more goals. Obviously, Hoffman missed a penalty as well. So I actually think Gladbach have, you know, a really decent front line that can cause problems. Um, having said that, I still wouldn't really bet against Bayern Munich right now. So I've gone for a high scoring 3 2 win for Bayern. Uh, I don't think it'll be easy. Gladbach always causes them problems, but. I think they should be able to do just about enough to get all three points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So both go for win results differ a little bit. That takes us, this is obviously also the actual top spiel. Uh, It's not only my match of the week. It's also the top spiel of the, of the match day. So that's, this will be the the Saturday afternoon game. Um, But now that takes us, takes us into the Sunday games. And the first Sunday game is Köln against Stuttgart. I've gone for a narrow 2-1 win for Köln here um, based on some penalty that the VAR room in Cologne will give them. <laughs> yeah, so really it's the DFB 2, Stuttgart 1. Is that what you're saying? I don't want to incinerate. incinerate. Ugh, I can't talk right now. I don't want to suggest anything right now, but I mean... <laughs> Kind of driving the VR luck train at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they certainly are. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with you on that. Um, I've gone for a narrow clone win as well. Um, I've gone for a 1 0 win. Mm-hmm. Um, only because, you know, <laughs> I think obviously clone have done a decent job, job of kind of grinding their results. Um, that one-one draw against Frankfurt last weekend made me really didn't really make me think they had a huge amount. Obviously, they're kind of struggling without Modesta up front, but I also think the Stuttgart team might really struggle as well because their main man Kaladzic is at the moment probably negotiating negotiating his contract with Wolves, and yeah. can't really overstate how huge an issue that is for Stuttgart because he maybe although he hasn't scored yet, I think this season he's created. The three assists for Stuttgart's three goals from the first three games. Mm-hmm. So I think his head will be turned uh, and I think Clone will grind out a result against a decent Stuttgart team, but one who quite aren't up to Clone's level. So I've gone for 1-0 for Clone. Yeah, and that was also in the newsletter, right? It looks like Stuttgart already have a replacement sort of in mind with Joshua Zirkse. Mm. Um And yeah, as I said, more details in, in my newsletter on that, and we'll see what happens with Sasha Kalajic, uh, whether we're going to see some sort of resolution even before this match day. And I, th- I think you're right, that, that does that does have a huge impact. Um, the final game then, Bremen hosting Frankfurt. Mm. I think this is going to be Frankfurt's coming out party, and they're going to win this game 3 now. Really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. So I've actually gone for a two-one win for Bremen. Hmm. Um, I just think they've actually looked really decent in the first three games. Uh, you know, two, 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 two draws uh, against Stuttgart and um, Wolfsburg, and then I thought that result against Dortmund last week was just incredible. They played Dortmund off the pitch, and they looked so composed, they look so well drilled, they know exactly what they're doing. Um and I think th- I'm I've now completely changed my mind on Bremen. I think they'll be a comfortable mid table side the way they're playing right now. Um and you know Frankfurt will be rocking up to that game, Champions League res- uh fixtures in the back of their head and I think they'll probably get quite a shock. So I'm going for a two one win for Bremen. Oh excellent. So we'll see there's a huge potential here that we're going to have some changes in our standings because our, I think this week we're a little bit different. Mm. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. S- we'll see if I can overtake you. <laughs> you might because I think I have a few in here that I might regret later. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the way. It's always the way, right? <laughs> All right, Stefan. Oh. As always, this show is brought to you by Bet Online. Uh, we'll be back with our usual round of uh, podcasts next week. And um, until then, 
Auf Wiedersehen. Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B L E A V on YouTube.